in this talk, we want to go uh, a little high level and uh, we want to describe how we envision uh, the future of Shiny and what we do to, to fulfill that future. Uh, my name is Philip. I'm the uh, CEO of Absalom. And together with me, uh, we have Marek, our CTO. Uh, so uh, we want to share what Absalom built uh, to empower everyone to create uh, spectacular Shiny apps. All right, so if you're still with us, uh, I think we can guess that uh, you love Shiny just as we do. Uh, I personally believe that Shiny is a, a unique piece of technology. Uh, it empowered thousands of uh, scientists and data scientists worldwide to share, uh, to first to create and then to share uh, their analysis uh, and useful tools easily. Uh, through the years, we've seen some unique examples, uh, some crazy ones, uh, starting from native iPad, iOS applications, through uh, software as a service, uh, Shiny apps, uh, ending up with offline uh, Shiny applications, on and on and on. Uh, just uh, through pandemic, we created free uh, publicly available dashboards uh which were mentioned in the press and on a given days they uh, received uh, significant traffic so i think that it is clear by now that shiny is ready uh, to be used in different environments enterprise environment internal uh, environment external environment uh, it is uh, being used uh, by governments ngos and business but uh, if your app is not basic, if it's not simple, your success is at risk. And there are certain constraints uh, that, you, that every uh, person that works with Shiny needs to be aware of. There are uh, technical and operational uh, challenges waiting for you ahead. Uh, and, and we've seen some great apps uh, fail. Mm. If, if navigated correctly, uh, these challenges can be resolved, risk can be avoided, uh, and, and we think that uh, here we've identified what makes uh, Shiny App successful. So, uh, if you want to make a, a successful app, you need to make sure that people are going to use it and, and to be happy to use it. And uh, right now, uh, people really don't want to use uh, slow or not great looking uh, Shiny app or any app. People, uh, people's expectations are very high uh, regarding the, the friendliness. I'm not saying your application is ugly. I just say some applications are uh, and uh, the, the better it looks, the easier it is to use, the higher the chances of getting buy-in from the people uh, who are going to use it at the end of the day. Uh, and we've seen some teams building uh, apps for many months, struggling to get an, to, to have an impact, and apps being bigger and bigger, slower and slower, uh, and, and apps uh, getting harder to maintain every day. Uh, of course, we also seen teams uh, which manage to uh, uh, create great apps. It, it is possible, uh, but it's not always uh, straightforward. Uh, and, and also very often, it is not expertise of this certain people to, to work in, in, in such a way. So uh, either uh, teams need to be either aware that they might lose uh, speed of development because it's harder to maintain, or they need to gain expertise in other domains, which are not their main do domain. Uh, on the other hand, uh, our, our background uh, is in 
so, so Absalon was founded by people with background in applied mathematics and, and software engineering. And, and we uh, kind of, we, we are attracted to R, we are attracted to Shiny as software engineers. And, and we think that this is uh, something we bring to a uh, diverse uh, community uh, of, of our world. Uh, and, and we want to embrace uh, our background. We've, bu we've built through the years uh, many different Shiny apps. We resolved many different problems, some of them taking months uh, to, to getting resolved. Uh, and, and we think that uh, we can share uh, what we achieved. Mark? Uh, the, we believe that uh, our background in, in software engineering and, and our tools that we've created uh, can help, can be our way to contribute to uh, our community. And this way we can uh, empower scientists, researchers, data scientists worldwide to create uh, spectacular apps themselves. Uh, we believe that this way more apps can be created uh, they can be created faster, and also uh, together we can uh, mm, encourage more people to try R and Shiny, uh, and and and, and kickstart their their journey. Uh, this is uh, this is one slide that I shared during my talk at a user conference in in Toulouse, uh, and at that time. I uh, kind of embraced advantages of Shiny uh, when compared to different technologies and, and, and alternatives. Uh, but uh, I, I think the solution to uh, building better Shiny applications also lies in these other technologies. And uh, as much as we have some advantages, we also need to recognize that uh, certain other technologies uh, can teach us uh, how can we do better. Uh, so uh, with, with our mission statement being, uh, being said uh, and uh, which is to empower data scientists to create uh, spectacular shiny apps, I will hand off now to Marek to show you some uh, work that we've actually put into uh, fulfilling on this mission uh, and also to uh, discuss our progress so far. Thank you, Philippe. So I'm very excited to share with uh, all of you these new developments that we will be releasing. Uh, and if you have any questions, please pause them in the questions section and we will be happy to answer. Mm, so. A great UI is something that takes your Shiny app to an entirely, level, uh, entirely new level. Uh, and we have heard great talks today from Tom and Shannon on BS Leap and uh, teaming, uh, from Pedro about custom styling, from Dominique who mentioned lots of Shiny extensions. Um, so, so there are a lot of great options already. Uh, however, looking at what is available in other technologies, um, they have not only Bootstrap and Semantic, for example. Uh, actually, there are tons of libraries for uh, user interfaces and so on. Mm, and not all of them are yet easily available for us in Shiny. So, so we are changing a part of that today uh, with two new packages, um, which are Shiny Fluent and Shiny React. And the main thing I want to talk um, about today is Shiny Fluent. Um, so Shiny Fluent lets you use Microsoft's Fluent UI in Shiny. But what is Fluent UI from Microsoft, first of all? So Fluent is a UI library from Microsoft that is used a lot in their software. Uh, if you use Fluent UI in your app, it can basically look like Microsoft's Excel or Outlook uh, and so on. So this means that your app gets a nice professional look which is a great fit, uh, particularly if your users are in large companies, uh, and especially so if your company is already using Office and 
for example, Power BI a lot. So we've seen uh, Shiny compete with Power BI quite a lot. Um, and almost always one of the points in favor of Power BI was a better interface. Uh, so today we want to bring this uh, to Shiny. Uh, right, so let, let me open uh, another page. Right, so um, everything you see here is a Shiny application. It's completely uh, coming from Shiny. And uh, this is built uh, using Fluent UI. This is actually a part of our documentation. So you can browse all the components that are available in Shiny Fluent, um, like var various kinds of uh, buttons, for example. Uh, it's it's very configurable, so like you can you can really have a lot of room in defining easily using parameters um, the the appearance and the behavior of of those buttons. You have uh, you have uh, lots of cool stuff like contextual menu, um, uh, nice nice looking list lists. Uh, I really like uh, some of the features that that Fluent provides for uh, guiding your users through the application, especially uh, for, for the first time, uh, like, like the coach mark that can appear and you know, contain some explanation. Mm. Uh, of course, there are nice, nice dialogue windows and, and so on. It's like just all of it looks nice and is so powerful and, and configurable. Um, so, also, Shiny Fluent has uh, all, a lot of components for which uh, often in Shiny we used to have to uh, pull in other packages like custom packages to, to have a nice, uh, uh, some kind of nice input. Uh, so, so a lot of this is already available uh, within Fluent uh, and, and via Shiny Fluent in Shiny. Um, so th there's one problem though here uh, and it is that uh, Fluent is based on React uh, so to get all, all this appearance you need to render it via React uh, and that's why we built uh, Shiny React which brings React to Shiny and the story of Shiny React starts when you thought just about how cool it would be to have a reliable and efficient way of using all the richness of the React ecosystem in our Shiny apps. Just think of it. There are so much um, great stuff. There's so much great stuff available in React, like all the frameworks, Material UI, Blueprint, Fluent, tons of components for charts, uh, maps, and whatnot. Uh, and also, uh, one uh, thing that is super important is that Facebook's team has put a lot of effort into uh, improving its performance. Uh, so, so it, it's it's really fast. Uh, so it can make also our shiny apps uh, faster. Mm, and JavaScript uh, the developers have all of this because they use React. So we should have that too. Um, yeah. So in one sentence, Shiny React aims to let you easily use Shiny libraries in uh, React libraries in Shiny. And I'd like to thank authors of uh, a package that was available earlier, which is React R. Uh, for especially for some of the ideas that uh, they have in, the, in their package, which helped us. And in our scenario and our goal, it uh, it just didn't work for us um, due to some some of the limitations. And one example here is that uh, React R seems to be focused more on uh, making uh, and supporting um, individual components uh, or just a few components and not necessarily entire URL libraries. Um, so what's special about Shiny React? It's first of all, you can port entire URL libraries um, and it's easy for Shiny app developers. Like uh, the inputs that you get are really close, uh, as close as possible to uh, the Shiny API that, that we are used to. Um, I think that was quite quite challenging to achieve is to give the ability to mix and nest shiny in react and uh, inside that have shiny again 
uh, like outputs from Shiny and, and so on, uh, so that we can still use all the Shiny components that we are used to. Uh, it also provides documentation for the components uh, coming from, from the original packages, but inside the R documentation uh, system, which is very useful. And basically it solves a lot of practical challenges that uh, you just don't have to think about. Uh, so, so this is what made uh, Shiny Fluent possible. And I'm excited to see what other libraries can be, can be made available this way. Uh, but let's go back to Shiny Fluent. So this is a most basic app. And what's special here is just, you just use the library. So you load the package, Shiny Fluent, and then, um, you just have to wrap your code in, in a with React function call. And inside you can use all the components that are uh, taken from, from Fluent. Uh, you can use all, all of their properties and, and so on. Uh, so, so basically this code gives you these two nice buttons. Uh, but so that, so that you fully believe me, uh, I'd like to do a quick live demo. Uh, so this is an application that we built just in a couple of hours uh, using uh, using Fluent UI. It's again all shiny. Um, so a scenario that we picked is that let's say we want to analyze uh, how our sales department performs and uh, which sales reps, uh, rep sales representatives perform best. So you can see here those all those nice inputs uh, that I, I think uh, are very very just pleasant to use. Um, it's always an issue with data pickers. Um, so, so I I really liked how they solved this in Fluent. Um, so, Really nice components like like this people picker, uh, which can show you a lot of details about uh, about the uh, uh, the people that 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 you pick. Um, a really nice uh, list view. Uh, but what's also interesting is that it, what you can see here, this is a regular leaflet map, like inserted with a leaflet output. Uh, but this leaflet output is inside. Uh, an entire structure which was put here, uh, not like like we used to do, but by by React. Uh, so it's not obvious that this works, <laughs> believe me. Uh, so so this is really cool that you can. This shows that you can embed uh, what we already have in Shiny inside React. And then then the same here with with this plotly uh, plot. Um, so let's so so this is a truly live demo. Let's Try to make a, a change to this app, add some functionality. Uh, let's see how, if, if we succeed. And so let's say we want to uh, filter uh, this list of deals closed closed by by the sales reps. Uh, we want to filter out the smallest deals, like have some li minimum limit for uh, uh, for the amount of the deal. Uh, so we can use. Uh, well, let's let's uh, find some component that we want to use. Uh, so we can pick slider, for example, and we can see that slider is just we just need to insert the slider uh, and give it an input ID as as user, usually in Shiny. Um, so let's let's do that. Let's go to our studio. Uh, so we can go to to where where the filters are. Uh, this is our UI code. Right. <laughs> so we have we have the slider. Uh, there's lots of configuration options. So uh, and you can just type uh, you know type uh, question mark slider and then you you will get that in the uh, in the documentation window. Uh, all the, all the options available. Uh, but let's say we, we define a step of uh, 100,000 and uh, we give a label. Uh, we can configure how to format that. Uh, 
Right, so this gives us already an input that we can use in our server uh, part. So now what we need to do is just to filter the items uh, uh, filter the items based on the input value. And that's, that should do it. Let's refresh the app. Right. And we have the we have the slider here. Uh, so I think it it looks really nice. It's it's just a really beautiful slider. Uh, if a slide can be beautiful, um, I I just really like how how it uh, smoothly moves. Uh, anyway, it's it's very consistent with the entire look. Uh, um, Right, we could we could add some debounds here. Um, anyway, as you can see, we can filter uh, out the deals just to the to the biggest ones. Um, so uh, coming back to the presentation. So the good news is that all of this will be open source, uh, and we will be releasing this in the just in the coming weeks, uh, starting with an early access group. So uh, if you're interested, please fill out the uh, masterclass feedback form. Uh, the link will be at the end of this presentation. Uh, and make sure to there's a checkbox uh, which you can check to uh, be in the early access uh, group for Shiny Fluid. So uh, make sure to do that if you're interested mm -hmm. in that. And you can already today uh, open the app with the demo uh, at this URL. Uh, all right. And uh, so the second area that I want to cover uh, is developer tools. So you may have seen Olga's great talk about best practices uh, just a while before. Uh, and what what she did was uh, she shared a lot of best practices that, that we uh, use in the community. Uh, and she did this in a non-opinionated way so that no matter what technology there were there were some examples but no matter what technology choices you make uh, you can still use these best practices there are a lot of options um, at the same time uh, at Absalon we are building patterns and uh, development workflow tools uh, that realize these best practices uh, in a very opinionated way which is in our opinion uh, just just works best uh, in, in most projects so today I'd like to share with you that we will be publishing a kind of first of its kind uh, Shiny application framework. So a thing that on, runs on, on top of Shiny and lets you be more efficient uh, for uh, building production apps. So there are a lot of areas that you can take uh, care of uh, to make your app work well in production. You don't necessarily have to Take care of all of them, uh, but but if you do, uh, it really really increases your chances of success. Um, so over the years, we've built uh, tools for all of these areas, and uh, in the coming months, we will be gradually sharing them as a unified framework. Uh, so why does this matter? Uh, basically, all of the points from the previous slide matter. Because ultimately, for apps that work in production, uh, the users, your users depend on them. And we need to ensure that they're, first of all, reliable and easy to maintain. Uh, but also for our projects to be successful, we need to do that, uh, ach achieve maintainability and reliability while keeping the development velocity uh, high, uh, which, like, keep the velocity that Shiny is famous for. Uh, so just some examples of what you will get with the framework out of the box. Uh, mature uh, domain-driven application structure, end-to-end -end tests, uh, like on this example of Cypress. Uh, comprehensive but easy to use dependencies management, like Olga mentioned. Mm, data validation. Uh, so. What's really new here compared to existing solutions? Uh, I, I think there are three main things. First of all, it's a complete 
uh, framework, a complete ecosystem covering, uh, like giving you an option for all of all of the points uh, that you need to think of. Mm, then it's uh, just the, the fact that we bring best practices from other technologies uh, in areas where, where as a shiny community, we can uh, benefit most uh, by learning from other technologies. And uh, the third, uh, you get all these best practices not as 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 a uh, as knowledge, but as code. So you can start your project from scratch with all the best practices included, and um, you can learn what you which parts you need. Like you can learn each part that you need uh, from the code that is already in your project and it's already working, uh, and you can learn from that. Uh, Right. So uh, back to Philippe. Yes. <clears throat> uh, so our workflow uh, uh, and Shiny Fluent and, and Shiny React are going to be fully open source. Uh, we are excited to share our frameworks and our way of work. Uh, but we think that sometimes frameworks are just not, not enough. They, they, they don't cut it on, on, on their own. Uh, and, and this is why we want to create another resource for uh, our community. Uh, so, so in other communities, uh, if you want to create your WordPress page, if you want to create your e-commerce store, if you want to create your static bootstrap website, uh, you can browse, I bet, thousands, if maybe hundreds, uh, depending on the use case, uh, pre-made quality uh, templates and layouts. You can choose, pick your, uh, pick the one you like. You can download or buy and customize with with a fraction of work uh, necessary to build everything from scratch. Uh, and th and this is why we uh, 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 we've decided to uh, do the same thing for uh, our shiny community. Uh, so. Mark. Uh, so so we, we decided to share some of uh, our work. Uh, our Shiny apps are uh, often uh, complemented for uh, how they look. And we are uh, quite proud uh, about taking care of uh, great design. We deeply care here uh, about stuff being both uh, easy to use and beautiful and useful. Uh, so uh, some of the layouts that were crafted by our engineers and designers are going to be available, some of them for free, some of them uh, to buy uh, on, the, on the platform that we are going to share with, uh, with everyone. So uh, what did we promise today? First, uh, Shiny Fluent and, and Shiny React are going to be uh, open source. Uh, you can create great uh, enterprise-grade applications, uh, uh, for, especially for enterprise ecosystem with Shiny Fluent. And uh, we should expect more uh, React uh, uh, libraries being ported as R packages uh, available to us. Uh, second, uh, we will open source a lot of our internal tools uh, to empower the whole community uh, to leverage what we've discovered in many of our projects uh, so that the whole community can uh, move forward much faster. At least we hope so. Third, uh, we will help kickstart uh, hopefully more teams and more uh, Shiny developers their own work with pre-made uh, templates and layouts. Uh, all this we do because we want to empower data scientists and scientists and researchers worldwide uh, to create uh, more and better uh, shiny apps so that together we can have more impact and help other people make uh, wiser decisions for the data. 